Go ahead. All right, so next I'm going to inspect the inside of the bus. I'm going to start with uh, the entrance. My uh, bus steps were securely mounted to the bus, not cracked, broken, or damaged. There are no loose or missing parts. The tread is in good condition and not peeling up, so it doesn't create a tripping hazard. My handrails are securely mounted to the bus. They're not cracked, broken, or damaged, no loose or missing parts. And as I enter the bus, I'm going to use three points of contact. Right here, I've got some emergency equipment. I've got my three emergency triangles, reflectors. We don't carry road flares. I've got my fire extinguisher. It's rated, dated, and charged. Up here, I've got my first aid and body fluid cleanup kit. They're both securely mounted to the bus and they are fully stocked. And looking down my aisle, it's free of any kind of tripping hazards. Next, I'm going to put the key at the ignition and turn it back into the accessory position. So next I'm going to go to the back of the bus. On the way I'm going to check to make sure all my seat backs and seat cushions are securely mounted to the bus. Once I get to the back I'm also going to start checking all my emergency exits. And you're just going to check each seat like this. The back and then the seat cushion. All the way down. Okay. Once you get to the back, you're going to start with your emergency exits. First, you've got your emergency rear exit door. It's properly labeled. And when you open it, the alarm sounds. When you close it, it turns off. Next, I've got my emergency roof exit hatch. It's properly labeled as well. What I would do to check this is turn this knob to exit and push up. The alarm would sound, and when I close it, I'll pull it back down and turn the knob to latch. I've got my first emergency exit window here, and three others. They're all properly labeled. To check them, lift the handle up, push out. The alarm should sound. When you close it, the alarm should go off. And I'm just going to check each one the same way. They're all working properly, and I would check this roof hatch the same way as I did the other one. Now, we don't actually open these at the test, but in case the examiner asks you why aren't you opening it, just tell them it's, it's school district policy that we don't open these unless it's an absolute emergency, because they're actually really hard to get back, closed back out. So, they never ask, but in case you get an examiner that does. Okay. All right. Last, I'm going to check my seat, make sure the driver's seat is securely mounted to the bus, not cracked, broken, or damaged, no loose or missing parts. I've also got a seat belt here. It's not worn, torn, or frayed, and it's securely mounted as well. And it latches and unlatches properly. Alright, so next I'm going to perform a safe start. What that is, is I'm going to turn the key to the on position and I'm going to wait for this wait to start light to go out. So it's gone out. So now I'm going to start the bus. I'm also going to make sure it's in neutral and the parking brake is applied. You see a little red light for parking brake right here. All right. Next, I'm going to buckle up, which is very important. I'm going to go ahead and close the door. And the door button is this one circled in blue. Okay. So first I'm going to begin with all my driver switches. So first I've got the driver and passenger dome lights. They're all working properly and securely mounted to the bus. And they're all proper color, not crack broken or damaged. So next I've got my master flasher row. I'm going to turn the master flasher switch on. 
and I'm going to turn on my amber warning lights and I see the indicator is working here so they're on. Next I'm going to use my red override switch to operate my red loading lights and my stop signs you can see in the mirror have come out so they're working properly. Next I'm going to open the door and make sure that the stop signs come out automatically and they turn off automatically when I close the door. Alright, so everything in the master flasher row is working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the master flasher off now. Next, I'm going to create a little bit of noise. So I have the rear air conditioning going. I'm going to use the noise suppression switch. Okay, and it stopped all the noise in the bus. So I know that's working. Um, this one you don't have to worry about. It's heated mirrors. It's not required to be checked. My driver fan, high, low, and off, it's working properly. <clears throat> and my rear heaters, both of them, high, low, and off, they're working properly. This is a heat pump, you don't have to check that. This is just the intercom system, you don't have to check that either. So, all my driver switches are working properly. Next, I've got my headlights right here. I'm going to turn them on. I can see them working in the crossover mirrors. Next, I'm going to use my bright lights. I can see they're brighter in the crossover mirrors, and I've got an indicator here as well, so they're working. Turn them back off. I'm going to check my left turn signal. I can see it in the crossover mirror and the indicator in the dash. Right turn signal, I can see it in the crossover mirror and the indicator in the dash. Next, I'm going to turn on my four-way flashers or hazard lights. It's this little lever right here. You just pull it out to the left. I can see them working in the crossover mirrors. And I also have indicators here in the dash, I can see. Now, to turn those off, I'm just going to use the turn signal. that cancels them. Since my hand is still here already, I'm going to go ahead and push this knob in. It's going to show my windshield wipers are working properly. And the washer fluid is dispensing properly. So next I'm going to go ahead and talk about my gauges. So I've got my two air brake gauges here. They're full at 120 PSI. I've got my speedometer, it's working properly. I've got my coolant temperature, it's in normal operating range. I've got my tachometer, it's working properly. And I've got my oil pressure, it's in normal operating range. And I've got my fuel gauge right here. I've got plenty of fuel, it's working properly. And I've also got my voltage the reader right here and it's a normal operating range and that's it for the gauges most of the time you're just going to say it's a normal operating range because there's no numbers so I've started with the switches I've done my lights and the gauges and I'm just working my way towards me next my steering wheel has no more than two degrees of play and the horn is working properly at this point I'm ready to perform my brake test so I'm going to turn the bus off. When I turn the bus off, I'm going to need to cancel the child check alarm. When you use the master flasher row switches, when you're displaying them, it arms the child check. So at this point, you're going to want to get up and cancel it. So you're just going to turn the bus off. That headlight, uh, the, that's just beeping because of the headlights, so just turn those off. You notice all the dome lights are on? Yes. That means you have to cancel the child check. As soon as those lights flicker, you know you can't do it. Whenever you sit down, you just want to be sure to put your seatbelt back on. Alright, so there are three brake tests. The first one is air brakes. The second one is the parking brake test. And the third one is a service brake test. So to begin the uh, air brake, I'm going to turn the key to the on position. I'm going to wait for the wake to start light to go out and all the gauges to synchronize.
All right. Do you wear a watch? No. Okay. You'll want to bring a kitchen timer or, or borrow somebody's watch for this. Okay. Because you can't use your cell phone. So, for the air brake test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push in the parking brake and pull down the surface pedal. The needles are going to drop a little bit. Once they settle in one place, once they stop dropping, you're going to time it for one minute. During that one minute, you're going to keep watching the gauges and you shouldn't lose more than two PSI, two to three PSI. Once that minute is up, you're going to start pumping the brake pedal. It's going to continue to let all the air go out. And before it gets below 60 PSI, the low pressure warning light and alarm are going to come on right here. And you're going to continue to pump your brakes down. And between 20 and 45 PSI, this parking brake is going to pop back out. What you're doing is testing for leaks. You're testing the low pressure light and alarm to make sure that if you lose a lot of pressure while you're driving, the bus is going to alert you. And you're going to continue to let out the air to the point where you know that this parking brake will take over and stop the bus if you've lost too much air pressure. All right, a minute's up. I didn't lose any more than two to three PSI. I'm gonna go ahead and start fanning the brakes. You'll see the needle start dropping. And right about 60 PSI, that low pressure light and alarm come on. And you just continue to pump the brakes. And the pipe brake popped out. So my air brakes are good. So I'm going to go ahead and start the engine. And that's going to build the air pressure back up. Now, it takes a very long time to build the air pressure back up. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to ask the examiner, would you mind going outside? I'm going to go ahead and check all my lights. You're going to open the door for them. They're going to go outside, just close the door back. And they're going to have you turn on all your lights. And they're just going to check the front and the back. So let's pretend that they're out front right now. They're going to have you start with the top lights, which we, you're going to use your master flasher switch for. So you're going to use your amber warning lights. She, they should give you a thumbs up or something like that. So you're going to use your reds. They're working. They'll give you a thumbs up or something like that. You're going to turn your headlights on, your bright lights, your turn signals, and your hazard lights. All that stuff you can see on those crossover mirrors, right? So you're talking about the ones in the back that they're checking for you? They, they go outside and physically check both. Even though they can see some of those in the crossover, they still legally have to go out there and check oh, them. okay. Sometimes the examiner will just go straight to the back, but usually not. Okay. So, we've checked all the front lights. They're walking to the back. They're going to stand where you can see them on one of your mirrors. And you just do the same thing. Walk, walk your, work your way from the top down. So, again, with the amber warning lights and the reds. Turn those back off. Your headlights are on, so your tail lights are going to be on back there. So you're going to just step on the brake, make sure the brake lights are working, and you'll go through your turn signals and your hazard lights. Now, they're they're not going to want you to show your reverse lights, but in case one does, um, just put your foot on the brake and keep it there and just put it in reverse for one beat. But most of the time they don't want you to do that. And they will tell you whether or not to do that. Okay. All right, so they've checked all the lights. They're back at the door. You just um, turn off your master flasher switch before you let them back in. Open the door, they'll come in, sit down. When they sit down at this point, you're gonna unbuckle. You'll go out there and remove your wheel chop. Um, this bus isn't chopped now, but it will be chopped there. Okay. So you move, you move the wheel chalk, um, just come back in, close the door, sit down, buckle up. At this point, you can see the tanks still aren't full, so you still have a little bit of time. So what I want you to talk about at this point is 
Uh, first, I'm going to make sure that the seat's adjusted to me. I can reach the pedals comfortably with my heel on the floor. I can reach the steering wheel just fine. So the seat's adjusted to me. I'm going to adjust my mirrors to me as well. So this joystick will operate both these mirrors. So turn it to the left. It'll operate this, this top flat mirror. So I'm going to adjust my flat mirror to where I can see the side of the bus plus 200 feet behind me or four bus lengths behind me. And you're going to turn it to the, the right and adjust your convex mirror on the bottom. I'm going to adjust the convex mirror to where I can see the side of the bus plus one full lane of traffic beside me. Now I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to adjust the flat mirror to where I can see 200 feet behind me or at least four bus lengths. And then I'm going to adjust my convex mirror where I can see the side of the bus plus one lane of traffic to my right. Alright, so my side mirrors are adjusted to me. I'm going to adjust my passenger mirror where I can see the first seat behind me and all the way to the back of the bus. Okay. So, now all my mirrors, my seats are adjusted to me. I'm going to make sure my windshield is free of any obstructions. It's clean and clear, not cracked, broken, or damaged. At, at this point, you're probably still going to have a little bit more time to wait. And it's going to feel like an eternity. So, because they're just going to be sitting there and they're not going to be talking to you. Okay. So just glance around the bus and make sure you, you remember to mention everything on your way in. You talked about the emergency exits, all that stuff. Just give yourself a chance to kind of double check your work. So. They're not going to require you to open this stuff up and verify. No. Okay. You just got to say that's what you're checking for. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure everything's there before we take you to your test. That's part of our job. We make sure that the mirrors are clean and clear. Um, everything, there's no illegal stickers anyway. We make sure your um, registration and your, um, <coughs> excuse me, your inspection is up to date and insurance and all that. So it's almost back to 120, which is where the governor cuts out. You'll hear a big sound, and that's when you know you're ready to start the last two break tests. <coughs> oh, excuse me.